Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Mark from uh, Solo Games, and today we're coming to you from a different recording location, so we're gonna try to see this, if this sounds a little bit better. Um, plus, the lighting's better, so I, I like this already. Okay, today's topic is gonna be about the Optimus Prime Transformers appearing all up in your uh, Brothers War. So, first of all, I think it's kind of interesting. It's a nice little touch. These are artifacts. They're kind of like vehicles and they're like robots and Brothers War is all about Mishra and Urza fighting each other with robots. So, okay, flavor-wise, if I stretch really far, I can see why this Universe Beyond can fit into Brothers War. Now, I think most of the community is just very upset right now because why the fuck did we put this into our, like, actual like cards maybe just release a side by side have a transformer secret layer that came with brothers war or something you know very similar to what they've done in the past with secret layers where they would have a special foiling like neon foils or you know sparkle foils from uh whatever they're the galactic foils from they look like pokemon foils by the way so if you have never seen pokemon foils it's the same thing pokemon's been doing it for years um it with with infinity you know having that secret layer with galactic foils I think it's fine to have a side by side. I don't. I, th I think it's kind of too crowded now to jam this into the product. Now, at first, a lot of the community was confused because we thought these transformer cards were going to be in our draft packs, and we're like, "What the fuck do we do with that? Is this one of those things where now during the draft you take an extra card out? Does that mean we get one less card? Because normally draft packs are 15 cards, is now 14 cards. Didn't understand what that all meant, you know, at first. Now at least that's settled. So at this point, just to clarify for everybody. There are 15 Transformer cards from the Universe Beyond set. They're going to be in the set booster and collector booster. I'll kind of get to what you're going to be expecting in two of those products a little bit in a little bit. But basically, in the set boosters, you're going to get the Transformers normal version. Call these the like more cartoonish. They look like they're screen caps from the like you know 1980s, 90s uh, cartoons, right? And you're going to have like basically all the main characters. You got Megatron. You got Optimus Prime. You know. Um, like Soundwave, those kind of things. You're gonna have those normal Transformer um, robots in there, okay? I don't know if they balanced it to be like eight Autobots, seven Decepticons, I have no clue. Didn't really look at it, I'm not that interested in Transformers, especially not in Magic, but I know there are a lot of people who are totally into it. One of my friends uh, just, I think two nights ago, was like, oh man, I'm totally building my Transformers deck. Cool, great. So again, this is the whole idea. Wizards building products are for some customers and not for others. I think that's fine. I think I, I'm not against that. I'm a big Warhammer fan. I would hate to have to force Warhammer into other people. In a similar way, just talking about that a little bit, I would hate if, for example, the Warhammer cards suddenly just appeared in set boosters. I don't want to do that to other people. I want to keep it separate. I want to buy Warhammer. I get a whole deck of it. I don't want Warhammer. I don't buy any of it. Better, right? Anywho, so the first thing is to understand the set boosters are going to have the normal, like the cartoonish looking transformers. You're going to have that in the non-foil and also in the foil. They're all possible in there. Um, the drop rate is about 10%, which means in a box of set booster, which is 30 packs. Remember, that's not the same as your draft packs, which are 36. 30 packs, you're going to expect about three of those transformers. Now, all the transformer cards are mythic rare, so there's no like common uncommon. Um, I don't know if that means they're all going to appear at the same rate. I mean, obviously, Optimus Prime, Megatron is what everyone's looking for. So those cards should be more expensive. Um, I don't know if they're going to have the same. So once I open the boxes, mass box open, I'll let you guys know what the rates look like. But at this point, I expect them to be printed the same, meaning you should have as many Optimus Primes as you have of whatever, right? Maybe something that you don't care about. Okay, so that's settled. Now, what's not included in set boosters is very clear, is there's another side of this whole Transformer thing. They have something called Shattered Glass. Now, Shattered Glass is the more artistic, you know, they, they, they draw them differently. Now, the lore of Shattered Glass is this is the alternate universe where Autobots are the bad guys and Decepticons are the good guys, and so they fight kind of opposite. Now, mechanically for the cards, they're the same card. So Megatron is still going to be the Megatron card with all the Megatron text. It's going to be the exact same as the Megatron card in the normal version, except the art is totally different, right? So you got Optimus Prime with like purple colors, which is normally associated with Decepticons. And then you have like Megatron in like kind of like heroic colors because he's the good guy now. So again, reverse, right? So that's going to be only in the collector's boosters. Now, I'm assuming normally collector boosters are pumped full of foils. I'm assuming these you're going to have foils, uh, you're going to have non foils in those frames because they're kind of the common slot. 
Um, I didn't really look up how often. I think you might get like one per uh, pack or something. So I'm, I'll, we'll find out again when, when I open uh, the boxes I have. Um, I will have some collector booster box uh, packs to open this time for sure. But um, what's happening though is there is a mega super ultra rare foil version of all the shattered glass cards. Now, normally foiling is about, I think in booster boxes, you're looking about like one in six. So a box of like 36 draft, you expect about six foils, right? Total. Um, that's about the normal foil rates and they do adjust depending on the card, depending on the sets, whatever. But the, the foil shattered glass, so the special frame ones, um, are going to be very, very rare. How rare? They're going to be as rare as the Neon Dynasty, Neon Ink, Hidetsugu cards. So those cards, if you remember, I think Card Kingdom did like a bunch of like polls, but they were talking about like, oh, if you want to get the, the least rare one, which is I think um, green ink or yellow, I forget which one was the least rare, it's like 200 collector boosters. And then it goes just basically almost exponentially higher uh, number of boxes necessary to, to guarantee open one of the neon ink cards, right? So they're very rare. Sounds like then these cards, because of the way that they are, they're going to be, maybe there's like, I don't know, 10 sets total in the world. So if you think about what's happening in the Brothers War collector's boosters, the actual chase card is the shatter glass. The chase card is not going to be the serialized cards. I'll talk about that in a different video about serialized cards and print runs and whatever for Brothers War. But I'm pretty sure if you think about it this way, then the shatter glass foil versions are going to be super mega rare. So if you get a shatter glass foil version, do not sell it for like, you know, maybe $10 above the normal version. Please, please, please price check it because those are super, super rare. So just be aware of that. And if you get one, congratulations, you probably hit the jackpot right there. Especially if you get like a Megatron. It doesn't even matter. If you just get any shattered glass foil, you probably hit the jackpot. Those are going to be like thousands of dollars, right? At least a couple hundred. If you look at the Hidesugus on release, they were all selling for like around, uh, I think lowest ones I saw uh, were like 1,400 up to 3,000, whatever. At the beginning, people didn't know how rare they were. So some people were selling for like 200 bucks. Um, that was quickly nerfed when they realized how rare, just how rare these cards were. Anyways. That's what's going to happen for the Brothers War uh, Megatron or Transformer cards. The one thing that I'm kind of pissed about with this whole thing, it's just like, it's like almost every single time Wizards gives us something nice, they always give with one hand and take with the other. What I mean by that is if you think about it, right, what do they just do? So if you're a collector, you really love like all this Transformer stuff and you want to bling out your deck. You want to build a foil shattered glass Transformer deck. I can pretty much guarantee you that unless you are willing to spend about, uh, so there's 15 of them, let's say about, uh, I don't know, $800, $1,000 a card, okay? Unless you're ready to spend $15,000, you're not going to be able to do this. Pretty much guaranteed. And I, I'm pretty sure like the Megatron, the Optimus Prime are going to be like two, three, four thousand. If 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 the rarity holds as they're talking about it, it's going to be very, very, very rare. It's going to be very hard to get these cards, guarantee you. So. That kind of sucks. So if you're a collector, you're looking at collecting all 60 cards, right? The foil, non-foil of both sides, the normal and the shattered glass. It's going to be near impossible to collect all of them. So you're pretty much looking at the non-foil. And, and here's the other part. Because um, <clears throat> they're basically giving out the non-foil, the normal versions like, you know, like, like candy. It's like everywhere. Um, that, those are not going to be worth much at all, right? I, I think long term. Now... It all depends on how rare they are and whether there's some secret rarity stuff that's happening that we don't know about, right? Where Megatron, there's like one for every, I don't know, 10 like sound screams, star screams. You know, I, I don't know, right? I, I don't know the specific rarity. Again, once you open the boxes, you'll know. They never announce these things. They just tell you like, oh, you're going to 10% will have a, uh, a Transformer card. That's all you know. So we'll, we'll kind of go from there. Anyways, one of my gripes is that there's this long tail Right, and maybe this is the right thing to do. Maybe I'm wrong. I, I'm I'm totally open to admit this right now. Maybe I'm wrong about this. Maybe this is the right way to do it, where you have the playables on this side with normal frames, and they look normal. I, I, honestly, the funny thing is, it's implied scarcity, right? The shattered glass are cool for sure, and they have special frames and everything. But the shattered glass are cool, and they're rare because Wizards made them rare. If you flip the book, right? Just imagine your head. The shattered glass were the ones in the set boosters with the foil, or whatever. 
But the cartoon ones, which look dorky and stupid, right? A lot of people were saying that. What if those were the, 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 the same as Shattered Glass? It doesn't matter. Those now will be the chase. Still, people will pay thousands of dollars for the cartoon version that everyone right now are saying stupid. I know it's, it's hard to, you know, in your head to kind of imagine the alternate universe version of this, right? But really, think about it. The scarcity is there because Wizards said it's scarce. You don't actually care which version, really, realistically. So if they had they made the Shattered Glass the, the normal version and then the, the cartoon one, the, the call it OG, you know, people like, you know, old school foil, old school frames, call it OG, add a little shooting star for the, for the foil or something. Are you kidding me? People are going to go crazy for those cards, right? This also starts another point, which is we already have serialized cards in the Brothers War collector boxes. So what's the point of having these like super mega ultra rare, um, lottery cards in the collector's booster again like is wizards so pessimistic about their product and their print runs that they have no confidence that they can sell these boxes that they're just going to keep jamming crazy cards inside i mean you know a while back right if you guys remember when they announced the lost legends everyone was saying in brothers war they're going to put antiquity cards in there oh lost antiquities right now they didn't do that and in some ways they did something even more rare than that they're printing one-of-a-kind cards, basically, right? So these, these Transformer cards, while they're not one-of-a-kind, they're going to be very mega-ultra-rare. And then in addition to that, the other cards, the, the serialized cards, are going to be one-of-a-kind, and they are ultra-mega-rare. So I just feel bad. I mean, honestly, people who want to collect the cards, I'm sorry, you probably won't be able to do it. And the people who are going to be chasing for this stuff, yeah, I guess you're going to have your chase. And so we'll see. I mean, only time will tell whether Brothers War is successful or not. Anyways, that's all I want to say about the Transformer cards. I'll see you guys later. Bye.